you are mighty we have seen your hand that walk in our lives so numerous are your deeds for us thank you for this is love not that we love him but that he first loved us thank you Jesus in your own words in the next one minute can you lift your voice and offer a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of thanksgiving. Think about all that he has done. Think about all that he has done. Think about his faithfulness, his mercies, his compassions that are new every morning. And open up your mouth and just bless him. Everybody, young and old, on ground, online. Lift your hands, open up your mouth, bless him. Truly we have found a friend in him, to whom all our griefs and our cares will carry and he will bear. We trust you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Come on, open your mouth. Of a prayer of thanksgiving. Don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. Raise your voice and bless him. Raise your voice and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Imela chineke mo Imela onyewe mo Imela chineke onyeke rua Na For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. Indeed, you're the Lamb upon the throne. And so Father, we bless you. We honor you. We acknowledge your grace. We acknowledge your faithfulness. Nothing that you have done for us is too small or too big to be spoken of. Blessed be your name. With my mouth Will I make no It's so holy in this place Your faithfulness Your faithfulness With my mouth Come on, proclaim it Will I make no
has done. Recount his faithfulness in the midst of the good times and in the bad times. He remains there. Just close your eyes and be still. Sometimes it is good. Don't sing. Just listen. Sometimes it is good to recount the faithful deeds of the Most High. Sometimes in the place of worship as much as we love to pray it is good to just stop in your tracks and think of the things the many things that he has done think about his faithfulness in the midst of the good times and in the bad times the God who is God both on the mountain when things are good and in the valley when things are rough he says for yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death yet i will fear no evil why for thou the moses says you have been our help from ages past lord we bless you we bless you indeed from our hearts we say you are worthy of praise you are worthy of thanksgiving. You are worthy to receive all glory, honor, riches, blessings, wisdom, dominion, and might. But now and forever, our lives are a testament of your goodness, of your mercy. Just love on him where you stand in this world. As you stand on this holy ground, just love on him. Just think about him. How good he is. How wonderful he is. And bask in his love. In the revelation of his love. If you have not loved us so much as to die for us, where will we be? Thank you.
Some of you, if it were not the mercies of God, if it were not for His mercies, that is why we say, To Jesus, the Lion, oh, glory and power forever and ever. It's very simple. Oh. Jesus the lion, to Jesus the lion, oh, glory and power, glory and power, forever, forever, and ever, and ever, one more time sing it to him, the voices say oh blessings and honor to Jesus the lion to Jesus the time sing it to him say oh sing a new song to him blessings and honor to Jesus the lion sing to Just the voices. Oh, 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 oh. blessings and honor to Jesus, to Jesus, the lion, the lion. It's called the lion and the lamb. Oh, we sing. for your majestic presence that is in this place we thank you no one can do the things that you do 
no one can love like you do. All that we have and whose we are is yours and us alone. And we bless you. We acknowledge you. We reverence your presence. We declare that you are king and you are lord, that you are sovereign, that you rule and you reign above all. Truly, what have you not given us? We bless you. We thank you because you are here tonight to transform, to change, to bless, to deliver, to set free, to elevate, and to turn around destinies, families, lives here present and those who are following online blessed be your majestic name Sing it. Sing it from the top. Sujada Nene Ke. Reflect on the words. be your name blessed be your name blessed be your name in our words in our language we give you all the praise all the thanks we give you the glory there is none like you you are deserving of all praise line together. Come on, let it flow from your heart. Let it flow from your innermost being. Say, we say for all the things you have done, we cry out, you just bless him for one more minute in your own words 
don't sing just blessing such an awesome God such an awesome God the God that we serve is indescribable there is none like him there's no questioning of his power there's no questioning of his greatness blessed be your matchless name come on love him love him love him tonight come on love him tonight come on love on him tonight tonight, tonight. he's worthy no one like you Lord. no one like you Lord. Blessed be your name. You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. Strings. That is why your name, your holy name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea, the name of the Lord is to be praised. From the depth of our hearts, the fruit of our lips is the praise that we give to you. That is who I am. That is who I am. Your name. Your name. Is that is who I am. Your name. That is who I am. Please be seated. God bless you. Welcome to Pneumatech. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Can we just celebrate God with a clap of praise? He's worthy for all that he has done for all that he keeps doing in our midst and in our lives he is faithful the sign that it is God is that the good deeds can be repeated again and again it is called his goodness the psalmist says I will sing of the mercies of the Lord and with my mouth I will proclaim his goodness God has been faithful to us we celebrate him and we thank him for many more that he will do in our lives and in our midst in Jesus name and I trust that tonight God will speak to us I trust that tonight we will experience transformation by the power of his words in Jesus name can we celebrate God for those who are following online? I know that there are a lot of people following from different parts of this country and in different nations. I know we have people following from the U.S. I know some of them. I know we have people following from different parts of Africa. Amen. And those of us that are online, Thank you for connecting. We trust that the same impartation that we receive here will be bequeathed to you by the Holy Spirit. Whether you are driving, whether you are in your bedroom, whether you are in a shopping mall, whatever time zone that you belong to, I know that tonight God is set to do something good with each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Aisha, Pastor Mrs. Aisha is here. Can we celebrate our mommy? Welcome back. Welcome back. Amen. 
Pastor Mrs. Aisha is a mother, the pastor with uh, this church, Compassion Church. And I'm so happy that she's here. Thank you very much, Ma. Amen. And every other person who is here, I will celebrate in due time. Amen. Can we continue from where we stopped last week? Is that okay? All right. So we started a series last week. What was the topic? Talk to me now. What was the topic? Building godly relationships. It's a lot I said there that uh, I would have done a recap, but because of our time, I won't do so much of that. Please make sure to get the message so that it can bless you. We spoke about relationships. We tried to define relationships and then also the concept of godly relationships. One of the things that we discovered last week is that relationships or godly relationships are God's strategy on earth. It's a strategy of God on earth for the discovery and the implementation of purpose. Amen. Once you know that God is the source or the origin of a particular thing, it is good, it is wisdom to go back to Him for the manual, the requisite understanding by which that thing will be run. The Bible says, Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that builds it. Relationship. It's one of the institutions that God has designed on earth to meet his purposes and his will for every one of his children. We looked at four basic categories. There are different kinds of relationships, but we just looked at four basics, uh, which we believe gives birth to every other kind of relationship. Last week, we looked at friendship. And we looked at partnership. We said that friendship is the intimate sharing together and the communication between two or more persons. A bonding or a bonding between two, two or more people. When you have something in common with a person, it is the ground upon which friendship can be established. We talked a lot about that. We saw several examples in the Bible several things that will be needed to ensure that we experience godly friendships or that the friends that God brings around us we are able to keep the Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother I believe that's the friend that God gives you amen because there are some kind of friends like Jonadab how many of us know Jonadab in the Bible some of you don't know Jonadab Jonadab was a friend of Ammon. Ammon was the son of David. Ammon was the young man who fell in love with his half-sister. And his friend advised him on how to have his way with her. May God not allow those kind of friends around you in Jesus' name. So that their counsel will not wreck or damage everything that God has been building. We looked at partnership as well. Partnership is more like friendship, but it's an advanced stage. Thank you. It's an advanced stage. This is where they don't just share things in common, but they have a mutual understanding and they come into a mutual agreement. So you come into partnership with people because there is a purpose attached to it. There is a goal to be fulfilled. Whether it is partnership in business, whether it is partnership in marriage, of any kind partnership really is a covenant term we saw a lot of examples from scripture and uh, one of the most outstanding examples of partnership you find in scripture is that between Ruth and Naomi Ruth said where you go I will go your people will be my people your God will be my God so for things to work out between these two people they come into a point of mutual agreement they come into a bonding that remains inseparable and we discovered that god more than ever wants his children the church to partner with the holy spirit 
that is the mystery behind the fulfillment of his purposes on earth amen this week we are going to look at the other two and i pray that um, maybe sometime in the year we'll come back to talk about what we want to discuss today because it's a very broad subject it's something that you cannot exhaust and um, we're just going to try to lay a foundation with everything that we discuss today i pray the lord that sometime in the year we'll return to do a full series on this and i trust that it will bless us in jesus name and then um, be sure to look on our social media handles from tomorrow i'll recommend some books for us to study for us to read to understand the subject that we are about to talk about more amen paul said till i come give attention to what to reading so i will recommend some books be sure to look on our social media handles from tomorrow or all our online platforms wonderful godly materials that will bless us and increase our knowledge in it in jesus name building godly relationships part two our main text is from the book of ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 8 to 12. now i want to tell you the reason why we are studying this aside from the fact that this is or these are some of the fundamental teachings that should be um, taught in the body of christ or in every local assembly this is one of the basics that the children of god must be established in relationship has a lot to play in our time i want to link the studies prophetically so that you can understand that we are studying this thing in respect to what god is emphasizing on in our time ecclesiastes happens to be the 21st book and we are in the 21st week of the 21st year of the 21st century now it's prophetic because this week there is not going to be any kind like it for the next 100 years so sometimes when we teach the things that we bring here from this platform are not just bible studies that will help you to grow alone there is also a prophetic approach there is a reason for why we teach the things that we teach it relates to our time the times that we live in the 21st century is a century of relationship i was having a discussion with one of my mentors uh a father in the faith this morning and he talked to me a lot about this the 21st is god's number it's god's time one of the emphasis you find in the 21st century is the emphasis on relationship almost every 21st chapter in the bible there are about 24 of them you can study them if you want to almost in every of this chapter god did something but it had to do with the partnering or the coming together of human beings so relationships are not supposed to be ignored in the 21st season that's the reason why you find a lot of allies between countries as well as a lot of disintegration is that true and while god is trying to restore relationships in this devastating age satan is doing a lot to destroy relationships because the bible says woe to that one who is alone before the devil destroys he isolates because when he isolates you it becomes very easy to discuss that's why in this 21st book the writer gave us a wisdom he said two are better than one it doesn't matter how anointed you are or how gifted you are you can't survive alone even if we leave you in an entire island you are there alone with god i bet you if god is there with you one day god will bring another human being to join you because everything that god will do on earth revolves around relationship whether it is relationship between human beings 
or relationship between man and his environment or relationship between the things that God created there must be a synergy for divine purposes to find expression that's the reason why we are studying this now and I believe God that we will dig into the fundamental principles we will go back to the Word of God and find out from God's manual which is the manual for our destinies the core principles that are needed to keep and maintain the relationship that God blesses us because I believe that the first gift that God gives to a man is life the next gift is relationship is that true we are going to see that very shortly so this has a lot to do with our time especially with the subject that we have in front of us so today we are going to talk about courtship and marriage say amen somebody said mm. I know we like that topic very well if you like it say amen, amen. if you don't like it say hallelujah I thought we'll have hypocrites here. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, today you permit me, I may be very raw at some point, very hard at some point. You are free to laugh if you want to, but make sure you get the message tonight. Amen. So we trust God for wisdom, we trust God for knowledge, we trust God for insight let's look at the scriptures let's begin somewhere because the scriptures gives us knowledge you know the lord told me something last year the lord said ignorance is the knowledge that imparts fear and revelation is the knowledge that imparts faith let me repeat myself ignorance is the knowledge that imparts fear ignorance is a knowledge actually Is a knowledge of nothing but revelation so let's look at the revelation of God's Word and find out the basics the core principles things that we can use to define this mystery term called marriage and understand God's workings through it for us Psalms 127 from verse 1 to 5 We'll be snappy today because of time. Because I want us to pray. Amen. Psalms 127 from verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. Continue to verse 5. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Go on. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Go on. Last verse, I believe. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate so this is a a good picture of this term called marriage it starts by telling us the foundation god except the lord builds the house god is so particular about the relationship of marriage we are going to talk about courtship because i believe you know courtship is a relay phase to marriage but God is so particular, there were not many things that God made himself in scripture. For most things that God created, he only spoke them into be. Is that true? But there are certain things that God took his time to make. One of it was man. Another is marriage. Except the Lord builds the house. So whether it is courtship, whether it is a relationship in process, whether it is a marriage, it is a house that is being built. The Bible says they labor in vain. That means others can build, but it is in vain because it is isolated from the core purposes of God. And then down that chapter, it begins to talk about the produce of marriage, which is family. 
and just keeps giving us the importance, giving us the advantage that children are the heritage of God. And happy is the man that has his quiver full. So I believe, listen very carefully, I believe that it is the will of God that every man and every woman that is born on the earth will someday get married. Say amen. Have you met people who told you that they feel that they are not supposed to get married? Have you met those kind of people before? Some of those statements, I'm not sure it's coming from revelation. It's actually sometimes coming from frustration. Maybe they've been into so many relationships and it's not working. And just saying, well, maybe I'm not supposed to get married. After all, Apostle Paul did not get married. It's not true. Historically speaking, Paul was married before he encountered Christ. It was just that Paul, being a Jew and a Pharisee, was married to also the daughter of a Pharisee. And, you know, it was one of the things he had to suffer for his faith. Now that he was preaching Christ, they decided he will have nothing to do with his family. That's why he stayed single. And also he discovered the weight of the burden of the gospel that was on his life. If you read 1 Corinthians, he said it in chapter 7 and in chapter 8. I think chapter 8 there about. It's chapter 8 or 9. He says, don't you think I have the right to get married like Peter the apostle or like James and the rest? So I don't yet believe if there are people who are celibate, they are very few, they have to be very few and they have to be, you know, they have to be clear reasons from their destinies and from their lives. But I believe that the will of God is that everyone here looking at me, for those of us that are not married, is that you will some way, someday wake up one morning and see somebody yawning by the side of your bed. And you will know that the Lord is good. And His mercy is endures forever. And those that are married and are enjoying it, say Amen. Okay. And they are not saying Amen. <laughs> amen. Genesis 2. Let's go to the origin of marriage Genesis is the book of beginnings almost everything as a matter of fact anything you want to discuss as far as the scripture is concerned or as far as the faith is concerned can be traced in its origins to Genesis so let's look at where it all started from verse 18 we'll read down to verse 25 I want to read especially this, this chapter in King James so that we can understand it from the original context. And the Lord God said, you know, I wish I had time, I would have talked about the Lord God. But that's not part of our teaching. Because if you read chapter 1, you see that it is written as thus, and God said. But in chapter 2, it is, and the Lord God. Is that true? But that's not our, in our teaching. I would have explained to us exactly what that meant. And how creation was departmentalized into stages. And the Lord God said, it is not good for that the man should be... That the man should be... So those brothers that are praying to be like Apostle Paul. It is not good that the man should be... That brother is smiling. <laughs> Amen. So better delete that concept from your mind by fire, by thunder in Jesus' name. If I don't add thunder, some of you it won't delete. And it is not good for them that, that the man should be, that the man should be alone. This the man, using the definite article the, speaks of purpose speaks of a specific creation or a specific accomplishment of God in this cre creature called man. And it was now God's design that this man, first of all, this man was the man that God formed from the dust of the ground. This was also the man that God planted in the garden of Eden. And so the Bible says, it is good for this man, 
This same man that God gave dominion and authority over all that he had created. That he should not be alone. I will make him and help meet. The word meet is suitable. Is the word suitable or qualified. I will make him a help suitable for him or a help qualified for him. Let's go on. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature. That was the name thereof. Go on. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to all the fowl of the earth and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead. Go on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. L let me bring some things from this scripture before we proceed. First of all, the Bible clearly told us that every other animal, every creature, every living creature that God made on the earth, he formed them from the earth. Is that not so? Now, purpose cannot be understood until origin or source is discovered. Is that not so? That was why it, I believe it was easy for Adam to give names to all that God created. The reason was because they were all formed from where? From the earth. And he himself was formed from where? From the earth. So God had wired in him an intelligence to understand everything that will find their origin from the earth. Catch this. But the reason why there was not found a helper for him was because for the helper to be suitable, God had to do something about the origin of that helper. Every beast and every animal was created according to its kind. And they were all created from the earth. But when God would create a helper for Adam, for man, he had to do the creation at the source or the origin of that helper or that creation was from the man himself. That was why when God brought the woman to man, Adam clearly did not have a name for her. Just in case you think woman was a name, let's proceed. I'll show you something. Next verse. And the, okay, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. Next verse. You know, I was joking with somebody and I told the person, let me leave that one. That, that's too early to, to catch joke now. But I'll come there. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called what? Woman. And the man of God said, jokingly, he said that when Adam saw the woman, he was so surprised and overwhelmed that he said, Woman. <laughs> Not me, oh. I mean, a man of God said that. You know, like when you're surprised, say, Whoa. So when he saw the creation, he didn't understand. He said, Whoa, man. Because this was another like himself. And Adam said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Notice the Bible did not say blood of my blood. There was something specific about this time of creation. Because the relationship between Christ and the church in Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible says we are members of his body. Then he began to talk about it in details. He said we are bone of his bone and we are flesh of his flesh. He didn't add blood. Because our life, the life that we live is not based on the blood that runs through our veins. That's for somebody who understands. So, she shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. That means if she definitely must be a suitable helpmeet for you, you have to find somebody that is part of you. In other words, somebody that is connected to your purpose. 
that you have long not seen or somebody that reminds you of where you are coming from and where you are headed to that's what it means when he says she was taken out of man God cannot give you a spouse that is the exact opposite of where he's sending you to now you understand what I'm saying all right therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh 25 and the last let's read together at the count of three one two three and they were both naked and they were not ashamed so let's discuss courtship and marriage of course courtship is an intermediary relationship is a relay um, season between the coming together of two people of opposite sex and when they eventually get into the institution called marriage so it also by extension covers what we call dating and all of all that period amen now first of all it is fundamental for us to know that before marriage is courtship that's true where the two people will come together and then everything begins to play out that means that for a believer or for two believers that courtship or that stage of the relationship should definitely lead into marriage which is the exact opposite of what we see these days these days we have test running okay now i know that there are exceptions but then if they are both believers and they come together and begin that stage of courtship it definitely must lead into marriage because that's where it's all consummated so first of all let's look at the purpose of marriage then we will now go into courtship and then we can look at god's pattern for a healthy relationship in terms of courtship and marriage so let's begin with the purpose first of marriage number one several but i'll give you a few purpose of marriage number one procreation everybody say procreation say it like you mean it procreation all right procreation simply means you know giving birth or producing children amen remember it is part of the blessing god told them when he created them in genesis 1 he said be fruitful and do what multiply so one of the purpose for why two people would come together to enter into the institution called marriage is so that they can fulfill the instruction that god had given from genesis 1 which is to be fruitful and to be multiplied that means one of the blessings of marriage is what fruitfulness everybody say fruitfulness number two purpose of marriage to establish the kingdom of god in our families definitely a marriage gives birth to a family another purpose is to establish the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is a system is a civilization that wants to find expression amongst men is a character that is displayed through the life of god in men and the way by which god will influence and dominate the earthly creation is that his kingdom will find expression and the bible says in revelation that this is the end of the whole prophecy the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our god so aside from procreation you get married because it is part of the fundamental purposes of marriage to establish the kingdom of god in our families so every marriage must produce a family and that family is a potential agency to display the character the life the civilization the modus operandi the nature of the kingdom of god amongst men if you are with me say amen yes so you don't get married just because you are now old and you want to settle down otherwise remain in youth fellowship 
Amen. Because you must understand that God is strategic about every part of our life. Including our families. Amen. So the purpose number two is to what? Talk to me. Is to what? Establish the kingdom of God in our families. Number three, to illustrate the relationship between Christ. <laughs> so some of us, these purposes are strange, but mm, that's why we are going back to the basics. When we go back to the basics and we see it from God's perspective, you now know why many marriages are failing. Because a man of God said when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is what? Thank you. Number three, to illustrate the relationship between Christ and the church. Between Christ and the church. Hmm. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 that this relationship is a mystery. It calls it marriage, but it actually says it's a mystery. Meaning, it is not given to the understanding of natural mortal men. The mystery between Christ and the church. In this relationship is companionship. In this relationship is fellowship. In this relationship is intimacy. Where both parties are totally bonded in spirit, in soul, and in body. That there could be a level of bonding between two entities to a point where the two becomes one. It is marriage that illustrates that heavenly mystery which is between Christ and the church. That makes marriage extremely spiritual in a dimension. Is that true? So when you find unbelievers getting married, what do you call that? Is it marriage? Maybe. That's what they call it. We are here say Amen. To illustrate the relationship between Christ and the church. Partnership is also involved in that relationship. How two people can come together and become companions to one another. How they can experience fellowship, get to know themselves. How they can become intimate with one another to a point where they know each other. Not just in information but in experience. And also where they both get to partner. So god brings you to connect with someone you have probably not met all your life or has, who has not been a part of your life in its core all along but it's surprising how this person happens to fit in and partners with you to bring about the fulfillment of destiny and purpose somebody say marriage isn't that interesting now, partnership reveals the role and the responsibility of both. If they must partner together, that means that each has a role to play. Each has a responsibility from God. Now, I wanted to do this teaching to examine the misconceptions about marriage and courtship. To also examine why marriages fail but I discovered that we will not have so much time. So maybe the next time we are doing this teaching, we may go into that. But let me just try to summarize everything in this next heading. So having seen purpose of marriage, let's look at God's pattern for a healthy relationship. God's pattern for a healthy relationship. Of course, you know we are talking about courtship and marriage. Of course, courtship is also a stage of that relationship. Now, before courtship is initiated, of course, a young man and a woman get to meet and then express um, or get to express their love for one another and begin to see the other person as a future partner in this institution called marriage. It is on that standpoint that courtship begins which is the real relationship between both of them till it is sealed in marriage some things that we must note first of all is that both parties must be born again before you even start the courtship 
before you even start, we call it dating. No be so. No be so. Uh-huh. The voice of the ladies are louder. We say nah, so. So we call it dating, you know, all kinds of words and all of that. Both must be born again. If the both are not born again, forget about anything. Let, let, let's, let's just be practical today. Amen. Because pastors have too much trouble in the body of Christ now. And one of the major part of the trouble is coming from dysfunctional marriages. And 70, 65 to 70 percent of the trouble is coming as a result of what we're about to examine. There is no need going into a relationship with somebody who is not born again or who is half born again. Now, just, if we, just because the person is coming to church, I'm talking to us young people now. Just because the person is coming to church does not make him born again. Let me tell you the truth about men. Men are hunters. <laughs> I told you before. Men are what? Hunters. Hunters without touch light. Or hunters without gun, whichever way you put it. If I see a young lady that appeals to my visual senses, excuse me now, visual senses as a man, the next thing I know is that I need to do everything possible to woo this girl to be with me. And then I discover that she's a born again Christian, she's a church person, and I know I'm not born again. Or my ways with God is one leg in, one leg out. For the sake of that damn cell, I don't mind going to church for one year. Taking Holy Communion. They can even attend discipleship class. You don't understand? And then the lady will say, ah! You ask the lady, is it God-fearing? She says, ah, it's God-fearing. Doesn't, it always goes to church. The moment you begin to ask them about the spiritual stand of the person... They, you will begin to hear some of them who think mainstream except the ones whose minds are transformed some of them who think they will begin to tell you about the atten- church attendance church attendance don't be born again no. a drunkard can go to church a drunkard can be an elder in church especially in these days where everything in church has been reduced to certificate you go to this class get this certificate go to this class it doesn't mind piling up everything why is it about the certificates no he's pursuing somebody amen and it also applies with the, the damn cell as well young men shine your eyes you know you, god will deliver us men because our problem starts from our eyes amen i taught you before i told you that men are visual creatures isn't it they are moved more by what they see why women are moved more by what they hear. That's why if the young man can sound enticing enough or he can sound genuine enough, even if it's a lie, she doesn't mind believing the lie. Because lies usually are most times the sweetest. And for the lady, as long as it's sweet to the hearing, it's okay. So for the young man, don't deceive yourself. The fact that she's tying her scarf all around. You know the way we tie hair in the knot here? For the sake of those of us who are following online. You know the way ladies tie hair in the knot? They can tie it to a point where you'll be looking for the ears. Just because she tied her head like that and she's wearing wrapper that is up to her, her foot does not make her born again. The Bible says, except a man be born again. How? He said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. It's a change that starts or originates from inside. That means only a truly born again can know a born again. Because there is a witness, a conviction in your spirit. When you see that person. Today I'll talk so that I can save some of us. Because some of you are already on your way. <laughs> Amen. So both of them must be born again, first of all. And they must both have sought the face of God. So you're a young man, you see a lady you like. The first thing is not to go and tell her, Oh girl, I like you. How far now? You know, guys have a lot of, or a, a lot ways of toasting ladies. Let me use that word, toasting. 
Somebody say toast. That's the word I'll use. Especially brothers in church now their own words pass. Amen. No, I'm coming there. So the first thing you do is not to talk to the person. Go back and pray. You know, in our days, we are gradually losing the art and the tradition of prayer to a point now where somebody will just bring the picture to the man of God and expect the man of God who is an oracle. I don't know whether the man of God is a madioha or a <laughs> I say, man of God, see. I've seen, you know why I'm talking like that? I've seen enough. I say, man of God, show you. They'll bring it, phone, they'll all, all bring it, you know, paper and all of that. See, if you try that with me now, I've repented. If you bring a paper for me, I'll point anybody there and tell you that's your husband or that's your wife. Amen. Go and pray. That's the reason why it is fundamental to know how to communicate with God. It's from the word commune. If you spend time with God, you will know how he speaks and you know how to communicate with him. When you know how to communicate with God, decision making becomes easy. So that when God tells you that that lady you saw is not the one who, she looks spiritual, she looks good, but that's not the one for your destiny. You then know. And vice versa for the ladies as well. Go and pray. Especially ladies, Jesus Christ. One of the hardest things to do now is to tell a lady, go and pray. It's like you confuse them. They will go and come back more confused. <laughs> lady, say amen. You no, know, forgive me for this night. Is that true? But it's true. Some of them will not go. Give them one week. They will not pray. They will come back more confused. Amen. <laughs> if I tell you go and pray, I, I discover you don't pray. The next time you come, we will go on dry fasting. Sure, you don't want to pray. You will fast dry. Even if I hear God for you, at least when the hunger has dealt with you, you. <laughs> Amen. The reason is because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5, Trust in the Lord God with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. Your understanding speaks of the information that you deduce based on your physical or your natural senses. What you see, what you hear, what you feel. You know, people even respect feeling in church. Feelings that can change. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. There is a temptation to depend on your feelings and say, oh, she's a beautiful girl, she goes to church. This is a wife material. The Bible says, lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, verse 6, acknowledge him in all, in all. Not every other thing and the relationship, you leave God out of it. Then when the relationship starts experiencing problems, that's when they now remember God. Because God has become Federal Road Maintenance Agency. Where, when the contractors don't do the work very well, they will come and start patching the road. And that, that means you need a patched marriage or relationship then. People don't understand what I just said. That's a proverb I used. So you have to learn, you have to go back Pray until you get a conviction because conviction happens to be one of your strongholds in the midst of tough times. Everything in this life that you have will be tested. One of the things that will keep you in that relationship or in that marriage are the convictions you had from the beginning. Not what people are saying. I've learned to build my life not on what people say. I can talk to God for myself. If God doesn't talk to me, I will wait on him. Let it be that whatever he says through people is a confirmation to what he has been placing on my heart. Amen? So this is like a fundamental. This is not, we have not even started. This is just the basics that must be known. Both of them must be born again and they must seek the face of God. So let's look at the patterns now. Okay, and finally on that, having sought the face of God and you now know he or she is the right person for you. You don't just go to the girl like the young man now. You don't just go to the lady and say, I like you, I want to get married. Now, I know that in this age, maybe because of the pressure of society and all of that, the moment you begin to get to 25, they begin to ask questions at home. Some of us come from lenient homes. I'm talking as ladies. Some of us come from lenient homes or God-fearing homes. They may not ask you a question. But their body movement alone is a thousand words. 
you understand that kind of thing uh-huh. but sometimes you know mothers know how to ask questions indirectly say mama which one you like you are trying to buy lace for how say this one this one you say no i want to buy this one for you no no no, no buy this one this one now wait till you go buy when you bring your madam come she has indirectly told you oh boy go marry so you don't just rush the first thing is i will advise or i will counsel start with friendship be patient you know one thing with the will of god one of the characteristic feature of god's will for you is patience patience in you and the patient of that the patience of that thing so when you discover this is a lady can i use which lady will i use okay um come sister grace and hey you are married so i can use you no problem i use a single lady now everybody will start looking at me Uh so let's say this is the lady now she's born again i'm born again i've prayed sought the face of god everything i'm convinced it's not to go to her and say i love you can we get married because some lady some guys think that the moment they mention marriage the lady go flow na lie you na lie beware of that and ladies don't allow that net to catch you amen the first thing or some guys will even go and say thus said the lord that's the rainy language now among spiritual brothers yes or no thus says the lord or you know i was in a vision i was sleeping and i don't used to dream in the afternoon and then i had this dream just i don't know whether i was sleeping i was awake i don't know but then in the dream i saw myself standing and then i saw you standing at an, at the other end of the road and you were holding flower and then you were giving it to me say amen, amen. that's nonsense It's guys that don't know how to talk that do that one. See, the Bible says, God bless you, sit down, my dear. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 30, that one of the things you can't understand is the way of a man and a what? A girl. So if you are a young man, the first approach should be with friendship. Try to be close to her. Try to befriend her. You know that one thing with ladies... It's easy for them to trust somebody that they start with as a friend. Much more than someone who just comes from the blues, a miracle husband. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. That happens, but that's the exception, not the rule. Did you understand what I said? That's the exception, not the rule. The rule is that a man shall leave his father and mother and what? cleave so it is deliberate start as a friend talk to her you know get to know her be around that that that's your emotion that is rushing calm it down put handcuff keep it somewhere and get to communicate with her get to understand her get to know her better and vice versa as well too amen you know sometimes like for the ladies now it's easy for them to hide even when they like you from the first day they see you they can keep quiet about it so that they will not go say I'm too cheap. Isn't it? Uh-huh. They say yes, sir. See them. Amen. So it's good to start as friends. Now let's look at the patterns. I haven't known these three basic things. Let's look at the patterns. God's pattern. For a relationship, whether it's courtship or marriage to thrive. Let's look at the spiritual aspect first of all. Like I said, they must be born again. So you don't even count this one. It must, if, if the man is not born again or yet to be born again, find your square root. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Some of us happen to come from families where, you know, unfortunately your mother was a Christian, but your father was maybe a drunkard or one thing or the other. Now, the fact that they had a peaceful marriage does not mean God approved of that. That was just the grace and the mercy of God to help them through especially in our time where the information flying around it's very hard for you to find decent young people so the amount of decency and decorum that existed in their time 
could have allowed them psychologically to manage each other. Don't try it now. If it's not born again, run for your life. Are you hearing me? Forget that car you are seeing and run away. Shout run. You know, because when they see a car, let's say they see a Mercedes Benz AMG. Say, I will consider this one. Or oh, come, sir, come. I like the way you are dressed. Uh -huh. See this kind of suit. And God bless you. You are having a key that has a remote control. Even if the young man is not born again, they'll say, God, you must consider this one. When you tell them to go and pray, you know what they will do? They will not go and pray to God and say, God, is he the one or not? No. What they will, their own prayer is, God, he must be. So you, they will come and tell you they have been praying, but the more they pray, the more it's coming to their mind. Isn't that because he's the one that you are thinking about? Go and sit down. I know some people will stone me today, but no problem. So spiritually, let's look at the patterns. Both that relationship must be established and maintained on the platform and the altar of prayers. Let me tell you why marriages are crashing. Marriages in church that they spend money to do. You know the most expensive marriages now is like it's Christian marriages. Amen. It's Christian marriage. Celebrate everything. Photo album can even cost you up to 40,000 and above. 100,000. I don't know what they are putting on the picture. Is it gold they are putting? 200. He's about to get married quick. So <laughs> maybe they are charging him. <laughs> Amen. But with all this flamboyance and glamour, people get into marriages and in just within months, they begin to endure. Something is wrong. Let me tell you something. Any relationship or marriage that is not established on the altar of prayers has already started failing. In fact, forget about any other thing. I can close the teaching and we'll talk on this. Why? Because you got to know that person was the person for you through prayers. Isn't it? What makes you think that when what you started or what was birthed by prayers will not be sustained by prayers? There's a song we used to sing those days. Jesus started with prayers and ended with prayer. Prayer is the man somehow it's true it's either prayer is the key or prayer is the hand that holds the key that opens the door i'm telling you prayers i'm not just talking about you people praying individually lose hey, i'm praying she's praying i'm praying now lie pray together you see let me tell you something about prayer prayer opens the aspect of spiritual possibilities that are that, 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 are, that, are, that, are, that are the attendant privileges of a believer. Every possibility in God is made available to you on the platform of prayer. So when you see two people quarreling in their relationship or in a marriage, could it be that the prayer altar is either dead or not established? Pray, oh, let me tell you. Don't say it's only for pastors. Now lie, pray more. Pray very well. Have days of prayer, if possible, once every month. Have a day to fast and pray. You know, it's gradual. These things are not, they are not the vogue now. I know some of you are here in the, in the few months from now, you'll be getting married. You are hearing, you are hearing the say, Apostle, ah, pray. Make I pray. Pray, oh, let me tell you the truth. Prayer reveals the future. When you enter that relationship, all you entered with was a conviction. Sometimes you entered without any pictorial view of the future is in prayer that your future will be bettered do you know the bible instructs us to pray about everything yes have time to meet and pray rather than time to just go and hang out that's good but there should be a balance have time to what pray sometimes do videos thank god for social media whatsapp you can pray online you can be connected together and you are praying you no know, God has delivered this generation that time during extra cool my God MTN extra cool I know if I take consensus now how many of us did it all of you including me I did it too let me tell you <laughs> amen uh, 
Thank God that thing was deleted. With all due apologies to MTN, that, that package was from the pit of hell. Because a young man that will not pursue God, that will not pray or study his Bible in the night, can be on the phone for four hours. What are you saying? Nothing. They can just say, how are you? Fine. What did you eat? Ten minutes have gone, no? Thirty minutes. But tell them to pray. They start dozing. You wonder why you have too many problems. So it must be established on and preserved on the altar of what? Prayers. Then let's look at the spiritual model for the man and for the woman. Beginning from the woman. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Ah, time. We'll not finish this teaching today. Maybe I'll just take the spiritual and one more and then we'll, we'll pray. Proverbs 31 verse, verse 30. I would have read from verse 10 down to 31. You can read that at home, but let's read this. This is the spiritual model for a woman. This is where every woman of God should aspire herself to. When I say woman of God, I'm not saying woman pastor. I'm saying every woman believer. Favor is deceitful. Let's read one, two, go. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. Some translations say charm. You know there's something called charm. Ladies have it. You look at them. They are so gorgeous. You can't take your eyes off them. The Bible says beauty is what? Vain. But a woman that what? Feareth the Lord. She shall be what? Praised. The Bible also tells us in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. So before God, a wise woman is first a woman that fears the Lord. Not a woman that, know, that knows how to use common sense to trick people. No. The fear of the Lord, what does it mean? It means a reverential adoration. A heart that truly honors God. A woman that is totally submitted to the government of God. Because you can't understand submission as a woman if you have not first submitted to God. You can't submit to a man. It's heavy now, but that's what it means. Fear of God. Let's look at the man too. I would have talked so much on the woman, but let's leave it. Maybe when we have a women conference, we'll, we'll do a lot of talk around that. Psalms 112. Let's look at Psalms 1. Okay, Psalms 1 first. Psalms 1 from verse 1 to 3. Then Psalms 112 from verse 1. Watch this. Let's look at God's ideal model for a man. And if we are not there, we need to trust God this night to help us to get there. Both single and married men. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of scornful. All this is talking about relationship. That means you know a man through the relationship he keeps around. If you are a man and all your friends are one leg in Christians, you are not a Christian. I don't care if you speak in tongues. You know, they'll tell you, and these friends, we, these ones are for so, 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 and so. Let me tell you the truth. That verse 1 just gives us a full description of who a man is. That you know a man based on the relationships around him. And the Bible told us he's isolated from certain relationships that are not godly. Why? But his delight is in the law. His interest is now in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He's persuasions his convictions are built on the revelation of god's word that god's word has become law over his life that's truly a spiritual man not the man that will tell you heaven helps those who help themselves have you seen that one before when you ask them why are they drinking they will tell you after all paul told timothy take a little wine for your Stomach sick, and after all, Jesus turned water to wine. Now, so allow me, let me drink. You see, it's one small bottle, it's one small. Ladies, run. Oh, some of you, I'm talking to you now prophetically. You are in a relationship like that. I came to tell you the will of God. No, run from that person. Wait, when he gets born again and begins to conform to this, start something serious. 
Because God will not manage what he did not start. And it shall be, as a result, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is a man whose convictions are built on the word of God. This is a man whose faith is built on what God says, not what the economy is saying, not what people are saying. This is not a man that listens to hear say. The Bible says his delight is in the law of the Lord. And because of that, he is like a tree planted. He is planted in the wisdom of God. And as a result, ever flourishing. Psalms 112 verse 1 again, another model of a man. God's pattern, God's model for an ideal man. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. You see, fear of the Lord again. So I think we should start saying, is, is, what's that word they use? God fearing. Now nah, that is calm. Use the King James rendition. Let's know. Is a man that feared, so that you, as you are saying it, even if you are lying, your words will betray you. Say he's God fearing. God fearing means he's going to church. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. And this is how the fear of God in him is displayed. That delighted greatly. This is a man that loves to hear the scripture spoken about. This is a man that doesn't only come for Sunday service. He's a man that comes even for weekly activities. He's excited when the word of God is spoken about. That greatly delight in his commandment. Not the one who is led by BBC or by CNN. And then they will sit down in the evening in front of their house with other neighbors and they are just in what news they are saying. The Bible says he greatly delights. Uh -uh, apostle, this one way they stress on like this. That means that pastor will go marry you. If there is a pastor like that, find him. It's better. The Bible says that the grass will fade away and the leaf, the flower will wither. But the word of God abideth forever. We are living in a generation where every found, the foundation of every structure is shaking. Only one thing can assure your stance. You need a man that even after 10 years of being married, no child, he's the one that will encourage you. And every time he speaks to you, your faith is built up. You need a man that five years you've been married, no job. And every time you sit depressed, a word comes from him that morning and lights your day. Why? Because it's delight. If it's not there, postpone the wedding date. In fact, cancel the wedding first. Because this is destiny we are talking about. Greatly delight in his commandment. Let's read two and three. And I pray that this will be the life of every man that is under the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. Amen. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Say amen. amen. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Amen. Verse 3. I like verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be where? Yeah. And his righteousness. That means you can become a millionaire and still serve God. Not the one that just because his salary increased to 250, he has become arrogant. What? You were jobless before, then you now got a job with IOM and they are paying you 250. So you have now become Alpha and Omega because of 250. You know there are men like that. And all he's looking for now is how to save that money for the next eight to ten months and buy the mess this Benz has been eyeing. You know why? So that he can start going to fish joints that he was not going to before. And from fish joint, before you know what's happening, he's at command. The Bible says, though wealth and riches is in his house, his righteousness is even heavier for us, the men, than even the ladies. Amen? So when we start praying, guys, I want you to pray. God must help us to come to that point. And then number two, we may close with this. Okay, we'll do this and then one more and then we'll pray. Number two, both must also be committed to spiritual growth and transformation. 
both must also be committed to spiritual growth it's not just a sunday thing it's not a church thing alone they must both be committed to spiritual growth and transformation his spiritual or her spiritual life must become an important issue to them the bible says in romans chapter 12 verse 2 be not conformed to the patterns of this world but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind that you may know that which is the good acceptable and the perfect will of god it's not just alone to be enough to be born again but you must be committed to spiritual growth he must take the study of his bible serious those days when we were in school in nifes they taught us something no bible no breakfast that means you are not permitted to eat anything in the morning until you have read at least five chapters of the bible that's a man not a man that will sit on whatsapp from 5 a.m to 7 a.m when your your colleagues on the other side are commanding the day they wake up early and they are chanting into the atmosphere commanding the climate against you for their favor you are on whatsapp you are replying whatsapp message in the night and they will tell you hey there's bible on my phone i can read it when i'm going to work that you are joking with destiny don't get into marriage before you learn it learn it now we must restore this as part of the cv of every man that is truly ready to settle down he must be committed to spiritual growth he must be a man that studies the world not the type that when you look at their bible they have been using it for the past 15 years they didn't change it a young man that doesn't have a study bible what's he reading because i want to know where your convictions are built on you don't know the world that we are living in the bible says we live in a crooked and perverse everything about this generation is perverse including the information that comes from it bomb happened here in medrugri nobody died you will hear different news media one will report two died the other one ten died who do you believe the bible says who has believed our report and to whom was the arm of the lord revealed a man that studies the word of god a man that takes time to pray prayer is a business for him he can go and sit down before god in the place of prayer no disturbance switches off his phone he's a millionaire but when it's time to pray he's before god not marry the man that god and his phone they are sharing space one day you two will also share that space as a woman these days satan has devised another strategy make the men busy overwhelm the women with work in the house so that the children are exposed then harvest them for the kingdom of darkness that means as a woman preparing to be a wife you are a pastor in training let me give you a story when i was born at the age of five you know through witchcraft manipulation somebody poisoned me i've told you before and i became deaf and dumb and insane when I saw the pictures years later, I didn't believe I was the one. They had to tell me, now nah, you be this. Deaf, dumb, insane at age five. School stopped. All I do in the morning is I'll get up from the house, go to the dustbin and sit there till evening and eat what was from the dustbin. It was a woman that stood her ground. My mother prayed all night and the next day I stood up and I could hear and speak automatically the miracle happened not because they took me to a prayer house now the question i asked myself i have so many stories i would have shared if i didn't have a mother that was so serious about her spiritual growth what would have happened to me today the moment you mention fasting the lady will squeeze her face and she'll tell you i'll fast to 12. You must be committed to spiritual growth when was the last time you heard from God? When was the last time you went on a retreat? When was the last time you became dissatisfied in your current level with God? This Christian growth, this spiritual growth, what is the end of it? Who are we growing to become? And that becomes a, a question that propels and initiates another level. I can talk about this from now till tomorrow. You want to understand God's spiritual pattern for a courtship or a marriage? This is how they should be. 
You see, when you meet together, whether in courtship, when you meet together to talk, you discover that there will be no space for the enemy to tempt you. Because your discussions are stemmed from your personal encounters with God. Yes, there will be time to discuss other matters, but it will be on this solid foundation. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. The Bible says, They that feared the Lord spoke one to another. It's like a husband and wife, they were talking. Oh, this was my dealings with God. This is what the Lord told me this morning. And the Bible says, Just because of that discussion between two spiritually minded people, the Bible says, God heard them from heaven. It was not prayer, they were not praying, they were just discussing. Two spiritually minded people, God heard from heaven. And the Bible says, The book of remembrance was open. What kind of family would that be? When my mother died last year. <laughs> Ma, I, knew, I knew I had to double up. I knew there was nobody watching my back again. So I had to multiply my prayer time by, by two. She couldn't speak in tongues. But we grew up, we knew that every 12 she was praying. 12 noon or 12 midnight. At first it was disturbing us when we were small. But we became used to it. Especially when your father is a military man who flies from one part or a businessman who is going here and there. It was on that foundation that we were nurtured. So that before I was 10 years, I had read the Bible back to back. Ministry that I'm doing now is no mistake. Somebody brought me up. And it must be a habit with you before you pass it to your children. Can we stop here and pray? I've not even gone anywhere. This is just one quarter of the teaching. I want us to look at the intellectual aspect, we'll look at the financial aspect, we'll look at the emotional aspect. I have a lot. But I think we can just pray so that I don't delay us again. Maybe next week we'll continue. Is that okay? Listen to this. John Wesley and Charles Wesley, two men that God used Mighty revivalists in their time, I think in the 18th century or so, or 16th or 18th century, thereabout. John Wesley was one among nine children. Am I correct? Nine children. His father was a clergyman, most times not always at home. And the mother took it upon herself to pray one hour. Was it every day? Or per week one hour for each of her children nine children nine today we have ladies that can't pray for 30 minutes but if you ask them what's the problem they can the problem can be in a thousand words let me tell you the less you pray the more problems you have the more you pray the less your problems and more of thanksgiving because even the problem that will seems not to be rolled away in prayers god will assure you that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and at the call oh god will also say all the days of my appointed time will i wait till my change You know, today in church now, if you want to do a program, you hardly can do a prayer conference and people will gather. Except you bring a superstar preacher. Now, we only come to church because there's a guest preacher. I wanted to say this about Meiduguri, but let me, let me just keep quiet. That's the reason why there's no revival here in this town. But thank God for what God is raising here. Because I discovered the cycle of Christianity in Meiduguri, especially in the Northeast, is they are only excited when there is a program. So the lifespan of your Christian experience is tied and attached to a program. Bring a great man from overseas. Let him shake his hand and power is everywhere. And after that, in less than one month, they all go back. You know why? Because we have individuals who are not ready to go all out for God. Let me tell you something. A prayerless Christian will give back to a dysfunctional home. A dysfunctional home is a broken church. And a broken church is a distorted society. That's how it is. 
But the apostle says we will give ourselves to the word. A prayer. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Listen, in a time where marriages are under attack, you don't understand this. Before, divorce used to be a thing of unbelievers. It has gradually crept into the church, even among pastors. If you are not married, I want you to pray this night because this prayer will sponsor your future marriages. And if you are married, I want you to pray. We are going to insist that Satan will not have our homes. That our homes will become the agency by which the kingdom of God will find expression. You don't understand. I was talking to somebody recently. I think it was this week. Listen to me. I was talking to somebody. I told the person, I said, I already have plans for my children. Once they are all five, or before they get to five, or once they are from five years, I'll gather them, we'll have a meeting. This is my own, this is me. And I'll ask them, which of you here is the pastor? If they don't talk, I'll say, who is seeing vision? When we pick the person, that, that, whoever that person is, all night together. Yes. Yes. Let him know that the red eyes is what is producing the transformation that people are seeing. You didn't read your Bible in Revelation. The Bible says there was a wonder that appeared in heaven. A woman that was clothed with the sun, the moon, and 12 stars on her crown. I preached this in a, in a church three years ago. On how that we need to teach our children the art of warfare. The Bible says, and another wonder appeared. And behold, the dragon, the woman was with child to give birth. And the dragon appeared that he may slay the child. Let me tell you something. The 21st century is a century of warfare. We are living behind enemy lines. There's no need to be called as a Christian. It's either you are for God or you are outside. But this night, God is releasing grace. Can you lift your voice and ask him for grace? Ask him for grace. You are married. Ask him for grace for your marriage. Grace. You are yet to. Very good. Lift your voice and ask him for grace. It has to be a strategy that will advance the kingdom. It's not just because you like her face. Or because you feel you are, a, you are, you are matured enough to settle down as a lady. No. Purpose is what we marry for. Purpose is what connected us. It is good for the man that is not alone. It has to go beyond your selfish motive to download a grace from God. Lift your voice and ask Him for grace. Ask Him for grace. Ask Him for grace. Mambros kapranda lakaria kato. Maprakosa banda lahaparide. Shapra telebro sutoro bahamaya. Hambo shabana brataba hazia kata. Leparo sekete bariata. Maro shetebendo sudia. Some of us are already married, and this was, was forgotten as a tenet or a foundation for your union. It's time for God to give grace that He be restored. Blessed is a man that fears the Lord. A woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Come and pray. Brako Satarabakatoro Bahadia. Mabo Shabambarakaba. Ilabako Sibranda Bragaladeva. In Jesus' name. We'll pray some prayer points and then we'll be done tonight. Prayer number two. And then I'll give an altar call for those of us 
who need to say yes to Jesus prayer point number two Lord I want to be committed to my spiritual growth and my work with you supply grace in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray some of you as you pray God is bringing a revival to your spiritual life that prayer life that is dead is coming back to life now grace to be committed I want to mean business with you enough of playing games enough of trusting in other medium a media and for some of us that are working with him Lord the grace to go further the grace to accelerate deeper in you that my mind will be transformed that my walk with you will be spiced with revelations of you a life that pleases God truly a life that breaks into heaven a life that experiences traffic from the heavens Lord grace come and pray come and pray he give that grace to the humble it's not just about you the destiny of a family is dependent on you the destiny of your unborn children or your children are dependent on you except the Lord builds the house Grace! In Jesus' name we pray. This last prayer point, listen. I read my Bible. I think it's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. It said, That which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Ghost, which lives and dwells in us. <laughs> you don't understand that. That means the Holy Ghost is not just there for you to speak in tongues alone. The Holy Ghost is there to secure everything that God has given you, including your relationship and your marriage. Some of us, we allow friends to be the bank, the security. That's why it's crumbling. And Paul said, I know whom I believed and persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him. That marriage is experiencing crisis because you have not committed it to the hands of God. And let me tell you how we commit things into the care of God's hand. It's by prayer. It's by prayer. It's in prayer that you commit it to the care of God. That you see, That's why I say that which was given to you or committed to you, keep by the Holy Ghost. Whether you are married or you are single, online or on ground, this last prayer, Lord, my marriage will prosper and will succeed in this generation enough to reveal your glory to my generation in the name of Jesus pray I wish that the singles will pray more could that be why God has delayed you could that be why God has delayed the wedding time there are things you must get right and those of us that are already married bless God but I want you to pray. There is grace tonight. There is grace tonight. In the midst of this crooked generation. In a generation where all things fall apart. Where systems are shaking. Where structures are falling. My marriage will prosper. My marriage is established. On the foundations of God. And it shall succeed. It must succeed. Come up pray. As you pray, God supplies grace. Come and pray, come and pray. Marosata branda kate, ila barakate la basubia. E papa shakopa rade, malosha brate keliaba. E sando kabarudia. And that devil that has toyed with that family, that devil that has toyed with that relationship. Your time is up. Leave that relationship alone. Leave that marriage alone. 
time for the King of Kings to reign and to find expression. Come and pray. Come and pray. It will succeed. It will prosper. It must be established on the foundation of God. Lord, your word says, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. I believe you, Father. I believe your word. Therefore, my marriage is established in you. My family is established on your peace. For it is written that you shall keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Hara In my life, be glorified, be glorified. In my marriage, be glorified, be glorified. Prophesied over your marriage or relationship. In my life, be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Come on, if you believe it, sing it with faith from your inside. If I pray for us, listen. Listen to this. God's greatest intention is that everything that He created, every institution that He established, will one day come to the point where they conform to the image of Christ. Because that it is His true likeness and ref a reflection. It can only be conformed to His image. It can only carry his likeness when his standards are obeyed, when his principles are followed, when it is established on his patterns. God is a God of patterns. Whatever he has established, he does not annul. Not only in your life, but in your relationship, in your family. God will restore godly relationships again to the church. Thank you, Father. All eyes closed, everybody standing. If you are here, let's not even talk about marriage. You yourself, you don't know the Lord Jesus. No movement anywhere. You don't know the Lord Jesus. So perhaps you used to be born again. You had a good walk with the Lord. But maybe the pressures or the distractions of this life has, this, has taken you away from that path. And right now you don't even know where God is. 
You may even be in a relationship or a marriage right now. And you are praying to God. Before God will answer that prayer, He must restore you again. He must restore your soul. If you are here and you need to say yes to Jesus, you need to give your heart to the Lord. Or you need to rededicate your life again. You need to come back to the Him who was your first love. While our eyes are closed and we are all standing in reverence to God and His holy angels, I want you to make your way to the front very quickly. Very quickly, within the next 20 seconds. You are saying, I'm coming back. I'm running back to the Lord. Before God begins to solve the issue of relationship in your life, He must solve you first. Your soul must be restored. The Bible said to the efficient, the efficient church in Revelation chapter 2, He said, I have just this against you that you have forsaken your first love. He said, go back, repent and do the things that you, you once left. You are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord. You need to say yes to Him again. Or you are rededicating. In the next 10-15 seconds, I want you to make your way to the front. Before we pray the final prayer. Surrender to Him. I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know While we are singing, if you need to join these ones in front, please join them. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. It's restoration that is coming to you, but you must surrender. Enough of playing games with Him. Enough of being the Lord over your life. It's time to surrender to Him who truly is your Savior and your Lord. While I pray for these ones in front, God is telling me that those of us in the congregation, I want you to pray and willfully surrender your marriage to Him. Willfully surrender your relationship. It's something you must do every day. The Bible says that it will be like a living sacrifice. We surrender because we don't have the, necessary, the necessities. We don't have the capacity to sponsor longevity as far as our relationship or our families, our, our marriages are concerned. Pray and surrender. Surrender to Him. Surrender. You have been used to running it by your own wisdom. That's why there are always conflicts. When God wants to bring a blessing to that family, there's problem between you and your wife. Or there's problem between you and your husband. Or there's problem in that relationship. Surrender to his hand. Rest it in his hands. Those of you in front, I want you to pray this prayer after me, mean it from your heart. It's a new beginning from with, with the Lord. He is restoring your soul. He's restoring you back to him. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge my sin and I surrender to you. Be the Lord over my life. Thank you for saving me. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Father, 
I stretch my hands towards these ones and I pray. Let the name of the Lord be named upon them. Let them be marked by the Spirit of the Lord. From today, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. I declare that they have victory over sin, over Satan. I declare that their entire life is for you, to please you and to serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please be on your feet, sir. God bless you. Can we celebrate God for them? Amen. And those, those who made the prayer online, please, we have a public relations number. You can just reach out to us online and then somebody will speak with you and talk to you further about your faith. God bless the two of you. Everything about your life is being restored. God is beginning afresh with you and it's from glory to glory. Who are they saying? Okay, please just walk straight to that young man. He will talk to you, pray with you and then you will join us again. God bless you. Please celebrate God for them. Can we sing that song again? I surrender I surrender I surrender I want to know you more. Can you lift your hands as we sing it? Your hands let me pray for you father the hands of your children are lifted before you as an evening sacrifice as an offering that is surrendered to you lord we make a confession tonight that our entire lives are submitted to you we surrender everything about us to you our relationships our marriages and all that concerns us we surrender to your hands and we ask that you keep them cause it to burn with the fire of your love cause it to be sustained by your grace cause it to ride on the wings of your glory father every relationship that is appointed by you that is dying now lord let it be resurrected back to life i said let it be resurrected back to life every marriage that is on the verge of crashing I declare life comes back to it again. Let the sweetness, the vigor, and the freshness when they got married be restored again. For he renews our youth as the eagles. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, I'm still praying. And I pray for those of us that are single. Anyone that is into any toxic relationship that is not of God but is like a trap to you you cannot come out in the name of Jesus we declare divine separation now we declare divine interruption now in the name of Jesus father I pray everyone here that is due for marriage and not yet in a relationship Lord between now and the next three months I pray miraculously locate them with their life partners Locate them with their life partners. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Your relationships will prosper. Your marriage will flourish. You shall become like a fruitful vine. Your children shall truly become arrows. Not just in your quiver, but in the hands of the Lord. The kingdom of God is established in our homes. And all that we do will prosper. In Jesus' name. Can we shout a louder amen? Yeah. Put your hands together. Give God.